Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. I am covering the Robert Card Lewiston, Maine mass shooting case. And I want to give some people an update because there's not much information coming out of this tragedy now that Robert Card, the mass shooter, has been found deceased. Um, we're not getting a lot of information when it comes to this case, like why and how this happened and information about Mr. Card. But I want to share some news with you because according to this news report here, Maine governor calls for independent commission to review police army failures and botched investigation around Robert Card's Lewiston murder spree, right? So they want to come up with an independent commission and that is according to uh, this report and that's what the Maine governor wants to do. Now it says Maine Governor Janet Mills on Wednesday, that was last week, said she would be forming an independent commission to examine the failures and oversights that led up to Robert Card's October 25th, 2023 murder spree. It is important to recognize that from what we know thus far on multiple occasions over the last 10 months, concerns about Mr. Card's mental health and his behaviors were brought to the attention of his Army National Reserve Unit as well as law enforcement agencies here in Maine and New York, Mills said in a statement. Yeah, there was a lot of red flags and these, these law enforcement agencies uh, got wind of who Mr. Card is. That one actually went to the home and did a courtesy check on him, you know, like well, a welfare check and he wasn't even there. This raises crucial questions about actions taken and what more could have been done to prevent this tragedy from occurring. Do you think more could have been done? Mills appeared short on answers at a press conference five days after the massacre when a national reporter grilled her for lack of transparency. And I was at that press conference. People are like wondering, hey, what's going on here? How did this happen? Armed with an assault rifle, Card murdered 18 people in Lewiston. That night, a gruesome campaign of violence he was able to carry out despite being known to his fellow Army reservists, multiple law local police agencies as severely mental ill so he was known by the army reserve and law enforcement to have serious mental health issues according to public records obtained by the main wire and other media outlets the uh sagadoc hawk and if i don't say that right the county sheriff's office there was alerted to cards instability and his possession of multiple firearms by his family in may so just months prior they're aware of him right Family members told SCSO that Card had access to 10 to 15 firearms and had grown increasingly paranoid. A subsequent investigation found that the staff at the Army Reserve Center in Saco uh, were also concerned about Card's behavior. They say in July, Card's behavior and threats of violence became so severe that military brass had him involuntarily committed to a psychiatric hospital in New York. Now, there's some conflicting information whether that was involuntarily or voluntarily. If it was involuntarily, how in the world did this man, how was this man able to still possess firearms? It makes it very, very interesting. Law enforcement officers in CARD's unit, including Oxford County Sheriff Christopher Wainwright, Andrew Scoggin County Deputy, Ellis, Ellsworth Police Department, and New Hampshire Police Officer Jeremy Reamer. They were like in his unit. So that's very, very strange, folks. In September, the SCSO once again attempted to investigate Carr at his home in Bowden, right? They went to his home. However, after two unsuccessful attempts, no further visits were made to his home. So there's two in this report. We were hearing like they were like one time that they went out there, not there, leave. The disclosure had been released since Card was found dead Friday night. That was the Friday night, a couple days after a shelter in place was in effect. They found him in a box trailer, self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. So they want, they want, the bottom line here is they want an independent com commission, according to the governor. Um, most likely they will get it, but what will this show? What will this, was there mi mishaps here? Will there be lawsuits involved with this case? Uh, backlash will people lose their jobs uh, you know could this have been prevented I'm sure the victims families want to know answers when it comes to tragedies like this 
It's very sad. Praying for the families. Let me know what you think about this latest report and hopefully we'll get this. Maybe it's like a commission that will come up with a report down the line and we'll learn more insight about this case because I'm, I'm wondering and I want to know for myself. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I am JLR Investigates. Been covering this case extensively out at the scene during the manhunt. So if you want in-depth coverage of this case, this is the channel to come to. Um, been all over the scenes, even the vigils set up, even the makeshift memorials outside the two businesses, the bar and the bowling alley. It's such a tra uh, sad uh, tragedy. And hopefully, you know, uh, these mishaps people can learn from the mishaps and you know prevent this type of thing from ever to happen again if you can do you think this is preventable let me know what you think we will talk soon stay tuned